future prosperity. Write down these four things. You're going to want to remember these. Probably for the rest of your life. Number one, unique. Number two, first. Number three, scale. Number four, integrated. Okay, let me explain these. This might be the most important podcast I've ever done. I've done some important ones. I mean, I'm not trying to hype it. I just feel that way in my heart. Number one, unique. You may have heard about the law of compensation. If you haven't uh, heard of it, Google it. It talks about who makes more money and why. And basically, it boils down to a few factors. But one of the most important is that to make a lot of money, you have to be in a field of high demand and you have to be at the top of your field that like you know if you drive a cab and there's nothing wrong with driving a cab you know there's a lot of people that could do it so they don't pay that much if you work at a restaurant um you know as a cook or a waitress or a waiter there's a lot of people that could do it so they don't pay that much if you're lebron james you know in the nba at the top of the scale there's not many people with lebron james's skills and a lot of people love to watch sports same thing with f- famous uh, actors um, you know, it's it's very rare. There's not, you know, uh, a million Brad Pitts. There's a lot of people, there's a million, millions of people that like to be Brad Pitt. But if, if, if you're in a field where there's a lot of demand and you're great at your field, you'll make a lot of money. Same thing with entrepreneurs, you know, Bill Gates. Uh, you know, there's not too many people that can start Microsoft and build it from zero. Steve Jobs, uh, entrepreneurs, you know, even CEOs of large companies, the skill set to do that successfully is 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 rare. So those those pay well. So number one is unique. Develop your skills in a way that differentiates you from other people. Um, in 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 in, uh, in high growth markets. So even if you do it in markets that aren't as high growth, you can still make some money. But if you could be the best in the world, but if nobody values what you do, you won't make much money. Uh, you could be the best, uh, you know, uh, I'm just trying to think of anything. I mean, nowadays with YouTube, you could build almost any audience, but there's there's some things that, you, that people are great at that people aren't, aren't willing to pay for. So follow your passions, but follow your passions in a way that is also monetizable. Uh, you know, be unique, be the best at what you do and be the best at what you do and a thing that people want. And here's the second thing. Sometimes you could create demand. Not always, because there's inherent interest and people are either interested or they're not, but sometimes people don't know that they're interested. Um, they would be inherently interested if they knew more about your product. Sometimes not. Okay, number two, first. You've heard about first mover advantage. Now, there, this is a yes and a no, because if you could get big fast before anybody else, that's where monopolies come in, and that's where you know things get crushed. Like Amazon is so big now, that uh, no e-commerce companies, I mean, we're one actually that's working on a new paradigm, but it's very difficult because not all, the, not only is the, you know, large consumer base, like Amazon has 50% almost of U.S. Uh, e-commerce, but the mind share, even Wall Street, you know, people, uh, you know, uh, just are locked in on a certain idea. So you have to be five or 10 times better. If you're twice as good, people won't switch to you that much because, uh, you know, they're switching costs and they, you know, they don't want to leave with the, you know, they're already, you know, paying prime or they're already, uh, you know, have a lot of things. That's why people don't change bank accounts. and they don't change a lot of things because, uh, you know, it's just a pain in the butt uh, to, you know, to make that change. So, so, so be first. So what, what does that involve? That involves doing a lot of research to see what's coming next, uh, understanding uh, trends, uh, because if you're first, you could get really big and really strong before anybody knows what's going on. And, and uh, if you, if if you don't do it fast and if you don't do it first, uh, they're just going to re- reverse engineer you and copy you. Uh, those who have bigger pockets. That's why, like uh, Apple, Steve Jobs, he didn't have the first MP MP three player, but the iPod uh, took over. And same thing with the iPad. And um, you know these things were done before, but if if you're a big company and you're innovative, you can take uh, something that is is uh, uh, potentially very big and make it a little bit better, and or a lot better, and um, then capture the market that way. So first only has uh, advantage up to a point. Okay, number three is scale. 
So you could be the best at what you do, but if only 10 people know about you, like Grant Cardone says that, you know, your problem is not uh, that you're not good. The problem is that nobody knows about you. I mean, it might be a secondary problem if you're not good, but, you know, he said, Grant Cardone says your, your number one problem in the world is that you're anonymous. You know, nobody knows about you. So you have to find a way. And, and there's different ways to do this. Like Elon Musk for Tesla, he just, um, they do no marketing. Uh, he basically does a lot of marketing because he does like podcasts and he, he creates a strong fan base. Some people almost say like a cult base, like the valuation of Tesla is way above uh, other auto companies because a lot of people argue uh, that are more sophisticated. I think the Tesla is not uh, an auto company. They're a software company or an AI company or autonomous company. Uh, I'm not going to get into all those uh, back and forth because you could, you could probably make arguments for both sides, but uh, scale. You know, you have to be big, you have to be known, um, uh, you know, and uh, there's also two sides to this because you want to be nimble and entrepreneur like like uh, uh, Jack Welch, who died recently, great, uh, great uh, uh, success at GE. Uh, he had like the two pizza rule that even though they're a big company that, you know, div divisions or uh, working groups were kept, you know, to sizes that they could have uh, meetings with uh, two pizzas or less. So, you know, even if you're big and even if you scale, you still have to have that entrepreneurial mindset. Like Jeff Bezos talks about a day one company. It doesn't matter how big Amazon gets and they're used, to, I think, over a trillion dollars now. Uh, or they were at one point and they might still be. I mean, I'm not sure because the stock market's been down a lot. I haven't checked it recently. But, um, you know, you have to keep that day one mindset, but you have to be scale. And number four is integrated. So what's happening now is that you could used to be that you could be the best of the world at what you do or, you know, world class and just like uh, be be profitable forever. But that's not the case because things are getting uh, uh, blindsided by crosswinds because what's happening is one industry is wiping out another industry. Um, you know, like, for example, you know, Bitcoin and, and uh, Stripe and, and PayPal and uh, Sophie and Robinhood, you know, they're, they're uh, you know, big threats to, you know, traditional um, uh, uh, brokers and banks and things like that. And you have so many innovative trends now. You have AI, you have blockchain, you have nanotechnology, you have robotics. Um, so what's happening is that if you're just in your field, like say you're in healthcare and you're not aware of AI, really studying it, then you could be the best at healthcare, but somebody comes along, even if they're smaller, but has the innovations of AI or robotics or nanotechnology or whatever it is. So you have to be interdisciplinary and you have to be interdisciplinary in a way that is number four, integrated. So you can't just like be aware of blockchain. You have to, see, it's, it's, it's not if it's not relevant to you, but like the biggest names of the world tend to co-op things. Like the internet was initially like uh, kind of like pro more profitable to small people, uh, uh, smaller businesses that do like Google AdWords and things like that. But then the big companies, you know, with the big websites, you know, took over e-commerce and, um, uh, you know, the small guys got trampled. It's the same thing going on with blockchain. Blockchain is becoming very corporatized. Um, uh, and every technology tends to be like that because uh, the big guys have the resources to do it. So you have to... Uh, be aware of what's out there, then you have to integrate it. So if blockchain is important to you, you have to integrate blockchain with AI. You have to integrate all the different areas that are uh, coming in the future, um, you know, that are going to be biggest in your field, uh, potentially. And if you study it, you can find out what those are. You have to integrate them in a way that's seamless. Because if you have just like different silos, like I have a blockchain silo, I have an artificial intelligence silo, I have a robotic silo, then... Um, you know, those are not helping you that much, if at all, because they're not creating like a, a seamless uh, user experience and uh, product development uh, uh, base. So you have to be able to integrate uh, the different um, uh, accelerating uh, technologies into your business. So I'll repeat them again, the four, the future of prosperity, if you master these, unique, first, scale, and integrated.